In this video, I explain Giffen goods, what they are, what they aren't, and why, if you look at the real world, you're not likely to see them. So, first of all, let's go ahead to an indifference curve budget constraint graph and see what a Giffen good is. Well, as you can see, I've drawn two optimal bundles uh, for two different prices for the good X. I've actually given you enough information to figure out the income of this individual. That's going to be because our convention is that all other goods are one dollar. It's going to be twenty-four. Well, this budget line here on which the optimal bundle is A has a price of three. So you can afford three X if you spend all of your money. This budget line here has a, has a price of four. So you increase the price and notice that bundle B is, is right here. Now notice something very puzzling about this graph. When we increase the price from 3 to 4, the quantity in the optimal bundle increases as well. It goes from 3 to 4. But what you notice is that when you increase the price, it is possible that you get an increase in the optimal quantity demanded by a consumer. Now this is awfully puzzling because, as you know from your introductory economics classes, we have a law that precludes this very thing. We increase the price, we have a law that says that the quantity demanded for that good for which we increase the price, that's got to decrease. So, this has got to be a very big puzzle. And in fact, it has a name after an economist who spent quite a bit of time thinking about this problem. This is called a Giffen good. Now, you may be thinking to yourself uh, that you can come up with several examples of a Giffen good. For example, um, one common misconception is that something like a diamond engagement ring is a Giffen good. As the price goes up, uh, you would expect more people to buy more of it because, well, flashing your money around, that's just a sign of, uh, that's just a sign, of, that's just a sign of, of status. So if you buy a big engagement ring, that's a signal that you're, that you're someone amazing and therefore, uh, you, if they raise the price, you're, you're happier uh, to go ahead and, and increase, increase the amount that you buy. That is not a gift and good. Notice that in order to tell that story, we had to change what the good was. We had to assign status to the purchase. A Giffen good has no such status. Notice there's nothing on this axis that changes in terms of status. This is merely math. And so what has to fundamentally happen cannot have anything to do with changing the nature of what this good is or introducing another good. Because we didn't change anything in terms of this individual's preferences or uh, do anything weird with the constraints. And so, a given good has to be, has to fall within a standard price change. So, what happens when the price goes up? Well, it turns out that the last video is especially relevant to this. In the last video, I talked about income and substitution effects. And it turns out that if you do the income and substitution effect decomposition, you learn quite a bit about the nature of giving goods. So let's go ahead and do that for this example. Now think back to what we did in the last video when we illustrated the income and substitution effects. Remember, when we were on our initial indifference curve, we were looking for the point on that indifference curve that has exactly the same slope as our new budget line. Well, it's going to have a steeper slope, so we're going to go up to the steeper portion going to be up at a point like point C. Notice if we go ahead and draw in our budget line that would make this the optimal bundle, and that would be just enough to get us right indifferent between bundle A and bundle C. Now remember from the last video, this from A to C is our substitution effect, and the rest of that price effect is the income effect. So we go 
go from C all the way down here to our new optimal bundle, B. There is our income effect. So let's actually bring it down to the axis and think about what happened here in terms of our income and substitution effects. Here, bundle C has to have less than bundle A in terms of the quantity. The reason it has to have less is because we have this diminishing marginal rate of substitution. As we increase the relative price, price of x ratio over the price of x to the price of y, increase the relative price, that optimal bundle along that same indifference curve has to be the left. So it's always the case that when we increase the price, we're going to substitute away from that good as far as the substitution effect. That's really what drives our law of demand, our, our normal, our standard case. But notice what happens in this pathological case. This pathological case, the income effect, is in the opposite sign of our substitution effect. It has to be that way. If it was, if it actually pushed us farther in this direction, well, the demand curve would just be even more downward sloping. So the income effect actually has to come back this, this way toward more x as this individual becomes poorer. And so it actually goes back all the way over here to a new quantity of 4. So one thing to note that when we get an income effect that goes in this direction, when we feel poorer and we buy more of that good, this is a good that is an inferior good. The income effect goes in the opposite direction of the effective income change. So it's an inferior good that has a big effect on how much you're actually going to consume. So it has to be an inferior good that constitutes a large share of, of expenditures. So this tells us a lot about what these Giffen goods are. It has to be inferior. It has to constitute a lot of what you spend your money on. And so, if you're going to be looking for a giving good, you're going to have to be looking for someone who spends a lot of money on something that they don't really want to spend their money on. They have to spend a big fraction of their money on something that if their income went up, they would buy less of that. Now, you don't find many, of, many uh, situations where people are in such dire straits. That's a really bad situation to be in, to be spending a lot of your income, a significant fraction of your income, on an inferior good. It's really difficult to find exceptions to this law of demand. But, now you know where to look. Just look for the gift and goods, where they might be inferior, and they constitute a large share of your expenditures.